Okay. Hi, everyone. So let me know when we can start. I think uh, we are already live. We can start, right? Okay, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar from Inside AI ML. Uh, we're going to talk about the future of data, which is how graph analytics is shaping the world. Okay, we're going to do a deep dive into how graph data is, what tools and technologies would you need to start with graph analytics, and how uh, and where can you apply graph analytics and graph database management systems and graph models to solve business problems with data, right? So it's a pretty interesting topic. I'm super excited. I have been working on graph analytics for quite some time uh, with respect to building recommendation engines, with respect to uh, optimization on delivery timings of, uh, let's say, any uh, platform such as Zomato, Swiggy. It's a very, very interesting use case, very popular in the industry. It's taking a lot of uh, research uh, jargon right now. A lot of researchers are getting into graph and the way graphs function. Right. Let's move ahead. So why do we need graph data or graph analytics? Very, very important, right? Right now we are generating close to 2.5 quintillion bytes of data, right? If you want a reference point, 2.5 quintillions is 2.5 into 10 to the power 18 zeros, okay? It's that, that big. That kind of data is being generated almost every day. And this is including all the technology platforms, all the social media platforms, all the data collection points, IoT devices, everything. This is across domains, business, health, uh, finance, marketing, all these areas, the data is getting generated at a huge amount. When data gets generated in such large quantities, the first problem that would be faced by individuals is to store this size of data, right? Imagine the amount of data that Facebook or Instagram or uh, any social media platforms are storing on an everyday basis. Every video you upload, right? Every day, millions and millions of video minutes are getting uploaded. Imagine YouTube storing the video at the best quality, right? From 2160p, 4K directly to 240p, right? And all of the variations of all the different songs, right? That kind of storage is definitely challenging. But we have been able to solve it with cloud computing, right? There is Google Cloud Platform, there's Azure, there is AWS. <coughs> and it has very well solved the problem of at least storage. And we are not running into less storage, at least for the next two or three years. The same goes for computation. With a lot of data in place, a lot of computation is also picking up. Every day we need to process this data set, store them in different tables, derive the insights or analytics from these tables as well, right? <clears throat> if you look at the chart here, the global data sphere by region is increasing in the same way across the world, right? China is not improving because it's a, the country restricts its data to a lot of places, but US, Asia, these are all heavily data focused, data centric markets, and the data is increasing by a huge amount. It's increasing exponentially. When that kind of data is generated, processed, and wants to be used for analysis, the problem that we see is that the traditional relational database management systems do not work that well, okay? 
we all understand traditional relationship database management system, right? There are multiple tables. We join them using foreign key, primary key, and all those other things. In a, in a, in a normal query at a particular corporate, you would see 15 to 20 tables being merged together. Each of the tables first need to be merged. Only then they can be filtered. Imagine you want data of one customer, complete data of one customer. So you will have to join tables for all the tables together and then filter for one customer. So it becomes very redundant in its usage because the joins will take a lot of time. When the sizes of the table increase, the complexity of the engine increases, right? You will need more computation and obviously you'll have to pay for more computation as well, right? That's where graph databases can really help build and solve a lot of problems, right? Any questions so far? Anyone? Okay, let's proceed. So we're going to talk about three things to set up the base of our graph data understanding. First is, why do we need graph data? We've covered most of it. We'll cover a few more additional points. What is graph data? How does it look like? How does it work? What are the different aspects of the graph data? And how do we use it to solve business problems? We're going to look at multiple use cases, applications of graph data. Right? We're going to go through recommendation engine, building a customer data platform, how to handle access rights, the user management system, and defining a success criteria in graphs. Right? We're finally going to visualize a few graphs just to understand what tools and technologies can be used to visualize and perform analytics. Okay, let's move forward. Right. So the primary question is why graph data? The first reason is traditional RDBMS, which is relation, relational database management systems, which are basically your SQL tables, right? They are not suitable to handle relationships data. This is very important because in a graph, every cent central entity, every entity that is a part of the graph is connected to other entities via a relationship. Let's consider the Facebook data, the Facebook network. Right. So uh, I might be following someone who might not be following me. So that changes how I can access their profile and how they can access my profile. OK. If I follow you and you accept the follow request, I can go ahead and look at your profile. But if you follow me and I do not accept that follow request, you will not be able to look at my profile. So there is access management. OK. Then if you imagine LinkedIn, in LinkedIn, we have first connection, second connection, third connection. So let's say I am directly connected to you on LinkedIn. You are directly connected to another friend of yours at LinkedIn. So that particular person will be my second connection. How does LinkedIn know that someone is my second connection? Because it has evaluated every individual in my network who is directly linked to me and every individual who is directly linked to the person I am linked. And just like that, they can find first relations, second relations, third relations throughout the LinkedIn data network. Right? So relationships give you something which is very important that is called context. What is context? Suppose I have a LinkedIn account. If you have my data of my LinkedIn account, you will know that this is the name of the person, this is the job he is in, this is the role he is in, all of that. Now, how do you know what is my context in the domain I am working? Suppose I work for AI and data science. Okay. What is my position? What is my relativity? What is my experience? What is my skill set in the AI and data science domain? For that, you will have to analyze every AI and data science uh, professional in the LinkedIn network, compare their characteristics, their education, their age, their role, their company, everything with what I do. So you will get a context of two things. The first is how I am placed in the network that I am a part of. Okay. Second context is how the network is distributed in the larger space. Right. So that is important to understand the difference between normal data sets and graphs is that graphs have an idea of context. Okay. 
and context can be user in a user space product in a product space user in a product space right so i can be compared with other ai and data science professionals ai and data science can be compared with other uh, professional categories let's say software engineering mechanical engineering robotics etc i can be considered considered in the ai ml space right and i can also be considered in other software spaces right all of that brings us the context part of things right now we can also store relationships what do you mean by relationships how am i related to you okay how how am i related to one of my friends right suppose if every time i go online i message a certain few people let's say my office colleagues or uh, my family members right so the platform knows that these are the people who are important to him because he has texted them multiple times so my relationship with anyone else in the network will be strengthened by the number of connections or number of contacts i have with them that is not possible with uh, relational databases right i know the environment around myself i know the space the region everything in the graph right it has a wide range of application there is recommendation engine there is searching right so if uh, normally what do we do suppose uh, you want to get to know a person the moment you want to get to know a person or you want to connect with them you find your contacts that know that person right we try to derive any relation or any contact we have with that person that is what graphs do if they want to connect you with another part of the graph they are going to find the shortest path through which you can traverse and reach that part right then there is relationship mapping analysis cyber security is a very interesting uh, application real time recommendation so what happens is if you have a relational database you have a csv file or data set the recommendations that you do you have to process the entire data together to make the recommendation but when you work with graph data the recommendations can happen at real time this is one of the biggest advantages of having graph data right uh, i'll also give you another example uh, uh, a lot of security firms right government security firms use graph analytics to find all sorts of uh, trading that is suspicious right suppose uh, uh, we are a friend circle of five people okay and we are all uh, like uh, very rich now to increase the price of a stock what we can do is i can buy a stock i can sell it to you for a higher value then you can sell it to another one of our friends for a higher value then they can sell another one of our friends for a higher value and when the price of the stock increases other investors in the market will feel that something special is happening with the stock they will all come in they will pitch in and they will start buying from us from our friend circle and there will be a point of time where all five of us friends will exit from the stock and the only people holding the stock are the ones that we managed to fool with our cyclical trading so these circular cyclical loops in a network can be figured out by graphs but they are very difficult to find out with traditional relationship tables right any questions so far i'll just quickly go to the youtube live to see if there are any questions pardon the audio wait out okay any questions here guys just post in the uh, chat right i'll be able to look from that <clears throat> okay uh, moving forward so there is also a possibility interesting application of sequential modeling right what do you mean by sequential modeling i bought a packet of chips today right what should i buy next what i buy next may be independent of the fact that i bought chips but it might be related as well right so just think about an example uh, when people go in the morning and they buy bread right a very traditional a uh, very popular example of recommendation engine but sequential recommendation okay suppose you buy bread what we can suggest to you is two things the first thing that we can suggest is based on your historical data what have you bought with us for in the past i can suggest something like that or for all the people who have bought bread what is the next most probable thing that they have bought right this is the idea of functioning of a recommendation engine right but the additional context that graphs provide is 
once i brought bread and then i bought milk i am more likely to buy something like a butter or cheese right graphs give you sequential input of modeling right a very interesting application is there in natural language processing okay so natural language processing initially could only detect sentiments from words so if you say that hey you are a very good person so the sentiment would be very good right the second could be uh, hey you are a very bad person so the sentiment could be bad right but the moment you switch it forward let's say uh i thought you are a bad person but you are actually very good what is the sentiment of this statement the sentiment if you go by words is neutral i said i use the words bad i use the words good but the context of me saying but you are actually good is only understood when you know the previous line that i thought you are a bad person but you are actually very good so the context of sequential application of data enhances the powers of natural language processing also and all of these are possible with graph data right so what is a graph a simple explanation of a graph is a graph is a collection of nodes and edges these circular objects that you see are called nodes and their connections are called edges nodes represent individual entities and edges represent their relationships okay so let's say nodes are representing students of a class okay nodes are representing students of a class relationships the edges represent who is a friend of who right so when i look at this graph of students can you tell me which is the student who is the most popular most popular student or the most friendly student is there any student who is most friendly when you look at this graph anyone i'm looking at the google chat okay i'll see the answers the idea is every node because the relationship between two nodes is this is a friend of this right the relation is this particular node is a friend of this particular node because they are connected via edges so this particular node is connected by 1 2 3 4 5 6 nodes so this is the most popular guy in school right unpopular ones would be this they have two friends only these ones also have two friends right so this is something called as a undirected graph that means there is no direction of relationship if this guy is a friend of this guy that also means this guy is also a friend of this guy so the inverse relationship is also true right so nodes and edges make up the graph nodes represent entities edges represent relationships right graphs can be of two types this is a connected graph this is a connected undirected graph this is a connected but directed graph okay for example in this particular case let's say this entity pays some amount some value some money to this entity right so this one pays this entity this entity pays to two entities here and here this entity receives from this entity right and just like that the direction will say which entity is paying which other entity okay that is a directed graph now you must be thinking that there must be some kind of requirement for any data to be converted into a graph the truth is you can convert almost all kinds of data into a graph as long as you are able to define what is a relationship right for example let's say you have uh, some data that you think let's take an image can you convert an image to a graph 
can you think of converting an image to a graph? Anyone? The idea there is every pixel in the image is directly connected to the pixel above, the pixel to the right, the pixel to the bottom, the pixel to the left. So the graph will basically be every pixel will be a node and they will be connected via four directions to every corresponding pixel. So that can also be converted to a graph. Okay. How can numerical data be converted to a graph? You can bin the numerical data into buckets and then whatever nodes are in this bucket can be connected with it right so nodes can be entities nodes can be characters node can be properties as well right let me quickly take a pen and explain okay suppose this is one node Okay, suppose this is one node. Okay, and this is another node. These are entities. Now, this is another node. I am representing it with a different shape. This is another node. Okay, this is another node. Let's consider this to be person A, person B, and person C. This to be character A, character B, character C. Okay, just assume person one, person two, person three. This is a, a good communication skills, good programming skills, and let's say this one is uh, uh, good looks. Okay, so suppose this person has good looks and good communication skills. This person has good communication skills and good programming skills. This person has good looks and good programming skills, right? So just like that, any data can be converted into a graph as long as you can clearly define what are the attributes in the data and what are the entities in the data, okay? Entities will have attributes that they will be connected to, attributes or properties. And the strength of the relationship can also be uh, created. So this person can be good in communication skills, 90 out of 100. So this will have a relationship of 90. Let's say this particular person has a, has a good communication skill, 70 out of 90. So this relationship will have strength 70. Okay. So I can quantify the strength of the relationship as well. Okay, I hope that's clear. Everyone just respond with a yes or no. So I know everyone's fine. Okay, now how do we build and work with graph data? So one of the most popular technologies today that have been used for graph data is Neo4j. Neo4j is basically a tool which is freely available for developers. I mean, they have a corporate uh, proprietary version, uh, enterprise version, which has much larger capacity or capabilities and they give you additional support as well but you can also use neo4j for free if you want right and neo4j is the database using which you can query graph data you can convert any data set into a graph data in neo4j database neo4j is the database provider and using a query language called cipher cipher is the query language that is supported to querying a graph you can query the graph database and do all your analytics, visualization, all the other things, right? Uh, for programming language, a lot of programming languages have integrations with Neo4j. So you can write Python code, if you uh, know Python very well, you can write Python code and the Python link to Neo4j is already available. So you can convert Python code into Neo4j code and you can access Neo4j database, right? But to build and work with graph data, the first important understanding you must, must have is how do you convert any data to a graph? Because if you do not create the appropriate graph, all the analytics, all the use cases that you will have will not work for you. Okay. After converting the data to a graph, you should also be thinking about the applications of graph for your business problem. If you say that 
every time with the graph data i will build a recommendation engine that not that might not be the right case okay for example if your customers are independent of each other right then you should not be using a recommendation engine because recommendation engine works on connections okay so try to understand that a business problem can only be solved when you understand the graph database and how do you apply the graphical techniques for the graph database okay and then obviously there is asking the right questions finding interesting relationships insights everything right the database we are using is neo4j the language we use to query the graph is cipher okay cipher is very similar to sql for example cipher has this match keyword which is basically like a sql select keyword right so you can see this match person whose name is dan and who loves a particular person okay so in this particular case you return the whom so can you guys think of the question the question is who does dan love right to so observe this name what is the kind of node the kind of node is the person node okay there can be many nodes this is a person node inside the person node i want to search for the person whose name is dan okay then i am looking for the relationship loves and then i am looking for the variable whom which i want the graph to return so if you see this i already know that there is a node where the name of the person is dan dan has a relationship called loves i want to find who he has this relationship with okay and just like that you can understand a cipher query it's very similar to uh, sql but uh, yeah you will have to do some practice for the syntax and exact words okay and there are obviously python integrations available you can definitely use them okay moving to the first use case i would just quickly like to take any questions uh, if we have before moving to the first uh, use case okay cool ah uh, moving forward so the first use case is a recommendation engine okay how does a recommendation engine work first we need to think of what a recommendation engine can recommend okay it can recommend possible relationships right suppose i have a relationship with a food item that i really like so let's say i say uh, i like chole bhature something like that right and i have three or four friends who i have a relationship of friendship so i like chole bhature i am friends with x y and z three different people all of those three like different items with respect to food let's say one of them likes burger another one likes pizza and the third one also likes pizza so when i am going to be recommended by a system some food item i am more likely to be recommended a pizza 
because the people i am friends with they also love pizza does that make sense i hope it does to everyone so i can get a recommendation on the basis of my friends entities similar to me and their choices right the second recommendation i can get is a product based recommendation okay let's say for all the people who like chole bhature the entire context of the graph not just my friends the entire context of the graph all the people who like chole bhature also like pav bhaji some other food item right so i can also be recommended that other food item third if i like Uh, for all the people who like uh, chole bature chole bature also has certain context in the entire graph right by that i mean other foods that are similar to chole bature they can also be recommended to me right all of those things now i can also be grouped let's say what do north indians like as food what do south indians like as food so i can have a context of the entire graph regions or spaces of the graph by product by entity type by entity with respect to relations they have and all of those use cases can be converted into a very sophisticated recommendation engine let's say i have five different similarity algorithms if four of them are suggesting a particular product then i will be recommended that product and there is a higher chance of me opting in and buying that product okay just how netflix uses a recommendation engine right for all the people who are similar to my age for all the people who are similar to my gender to all the people who have watched the same shows that i have watched in the past if they watch something new netflix is going to recommend me something new which is the same right so just like that you can get recommended on the basis of your choices of your characteristic properties of your past selections of the selections that you have done and how they relate to other selections right and that's also a part of collaborative filtering right recommendations can actually happen in real time it can be with respect to correlation of product correlation of customers correlation of inventories suppliers logistics social sentiment data let's say i have went to a social media platform and commented positive for a particular article all the people who have commented positive for that very article they have also read other articles that i might have not read so i will be suggested those articles where people who have positively commented in my article have also commented there so expecting that the choices will be similar if both of us like a similar thing there is a high chance that whatever else you like i might like it too right so recommendation engine is a very big and very important application of graph based data analytics okay coming to the next use case which is a customer data platform just imagine a company like apple okay they sell iphones they sell ipads they sell macbooks they sell airpods they sell uh, ipods they sell iwatch so once you get inside the system of apple products apple can actually cover all your technology needs laptop phone uh, earphones watches smart watches everything right now what happens on a daily basis my apple watch collects my movement data my health data and everything my apple id collects my spending habits how much do i spend using my apple wallet and other things my macbook sees my daily usage of my laptop what websites i go to uh, how much time do i spend in meetings what does my calendar look like uh, when am i sleeping when am i up right my phone goes through all the people i am connected to my contacts my email and everything just imagine the amount of data that apple has about one individual customer what kind of music do i like to hear what kind of movies do i watch okay do i like uh, la, you know very fast music 
do i listen to very loud music or soft music what are the times when i generally prefer listening to music that can all be collected just using the airpods okay do i play some kind of sport or not that can be collected with an i watch do i hit the gym regularly or not all of those once you have that kind of integrated all property all characteristic data of customers you can make a customer data platform where everything about the customer can be customized i can be shown movies i'd more likely watch i can be shown games that i would likely prefer i can be shown marketing advertisements where i'm more likely to buy i can be show, shown uh, investment strategies where i can actually invest right i can be shown new apple products that i might be purchasing right so once you build a custo- customer data platform in a graph you can just imagine there are uh, let's say all the customers of apple who have bought a macbook pro all the customers of apple who have bought the iphone 13 pro they are all connected they are all part of the graph they are similar people similar people in the sense of let's say they are all rich enough or let's say financially capable enough to buy an iphone 13 right uh, let's say you have a laptop so all the customers that have bought a laptop are maybe from a tech side role or have the finances to get a laptop all the people who do exercise every day using the apple watch they can track it so they know that these are all the people who are uh, let's say fitness minded all of that information can be fed into a graph and then that graph can be used to analyze the properties of different kinds of customers you have different kinds of uh, products those customers choose uh, what is the most popular product amongst customers all of those right i hope that makes sense to everyone just put a yes no on the chat so i know you are all clear with that once you have the customer data platform with you you can integrate every consumer into that environment and make sure you add a lot of value because they are not going to search randomly everything they want uh the most likely things that they would like are already there on the platform okay because the whole data is integrated in one place right we don't have to use multiple tools to do multiple things one tool is enough that's the customer data platform right the third use case that we are going to talk, talk about is identity and access management okay identity and access management is a very interesting use case because today with the increasing amount of technology so many users of technology large companies working with like 500 or 1000 employees at every level right imagine the data that google has the data that facebook has the data that these big big companies already host on their servers right the access to that data and considering data is the new gold the access to that data is very very critical very risky and also very expensive for companies imagine some facebook employee working at facebook uh, releases all the data of facebook into the open black market can you imagine the privacy issue the privacy legal legality cases that facebook has to go through right let's say all my messages on facebook are now public so everybody knows who i talk to what i talk about what am i interested in what i'm not interested in that's so much valuable data and imagine that data for someone like me who is not that i mean let's say socially important imagine the social media platforms of leaders world leaders politicians right ceos of big companies that getting leaked right when that happens it's a very risky situation so how do we manage the access of each and every individual in a large organizational setting a graph can very well be used there with the additional advantage of a directed graph okay there are certain platforms that have multiple layers of security let's say something has the super admin security right super admin is something that has access to everything any database any platform side of things any individual user data everything the super admin has all the access then there is the admin who has lesser access than the super admin he let's say controls certain important databases things like that okay uh let's say if you talk about the hr the hr has access to the salaries database 
but hr does not have access to companies customer database let's say a data scientist they will have access to a company's customer database because they will use it but they will not have access to the database that an hr has right in all of those cases what's important is you can manage the access you give to every individual someone can be a editor someone can be a viewer some can someone can be a user someone can uh, share it some someone cannot share it someone is an admin someone is super admin all of those things right you can also form a group of devices and allot their access to a larger group suppose the data science team gets access to all the customer data sets for the entire company okay the ceo gets access to all the business transactions across the company okay all of those things so that access can actually be split and grouped into a group of individuals group of devices and then they can be connected as well right whenever a user with a particular login id and password is trying to access a platform using the graph and graph traversal you can find if that guy has access to that platform or not so real time user access management is possible using uh one second okay so real time identity and access management is very easily possible you can authenticate users you can set authorizations let's say a new user comes in and you want to give them uh, the access to a platform all you have to do is form a connection inside your graph database you have to form a new connection a relationship between the new identity the new entity that has joined the platform the new user and the system that they are asking access to so access can be easily managed you can see an example here this user can access this system this user can register on this platform this platform is registered on the system device uh, this user supports this location does not support all of that individual understanding and analysis can also be done by a graph right so suppose if i ask you how many ways are there to access the system device you can quickly count the number of relations the number of edges pointing to the system device and you can evaluate that there are x number of connections possible so there are x ways to handle the system device okay next use case what is the success criteria for applications in uh, graph databases right the first thing is you have to build the right database you cannot have a database that has no connections with any nodes right for example if every customer is an individual node and there are no connections no edges between them then it is obviously useless to have that kind of graph because you cannot traverse through customers you cannot recommend them you cannot compare them there is no common property there is no common characteristic and it's not going to work so to build the right database you have to make sure that there are legitimate connections between different nodes and other node different nodes in the system and the edges have certain kinds of relationships they have certain kind of weighting and everything right the next is try to make all possible connections okay a lot of times what happens is uh people using graph databases they select entities they get all the entities in the graph but they forget to make some connections those connections can be very crucial for the graph to act in a connected way if the connections are not made properly then the graph will not be totally connected and if there are separate parts of the graph just imagine one thing uh if there are two sub graphs in a large graph can you at any point of time analyze the whole graph together no because there are two separate segments so the connection should be built appropriately such that the whole graph can act as one graph and do the insights and analysis individual parts of the graph the regions and spaces can also act individually as well as with respect to the larger graph 
Okay, so the pipeline for addition of graphs with new data that should also be built. Let's say a new user comes in, a new product comes in, a new consumer comes in, a new uh, access management uh, person comes in, a new system comes in inside the graph. There should be a possible pipeline that can seamlessly integrate the new entity in the graph, find all its possible connections, make those connections in real time and set the graph, make it ready for usage. Okay. And finally setting the right insights and visualization. So let's say you have five sets of analysis that you do with the graph. Okay. You have to make sure that those five sets of analysis can be reported directly and any interesting insights and visualization should be highlighted for the user of the graph to take advantage of the insights. Let's say there are certain insights in the graph that you have never found out. So even if you have them available in front of you, you are not able to leverage the potential of your graph, right? And that creates, I mean, loss of value because you could get that information, you could get that knowledge, but it's just that you couldn't because of the way you built the structure of the graph. Right now, obviously, we've done a lot of good talks about graph. Okay, a practical example is something that you see on the screen. So let's go through this cipher query and try to understand what this does. Okay, so look at this match is the keyword, which is like a select in SQL, right? You are looking for an entity which is categorized as person. So you're looking with all the persons, all the person uh, nodes in the graph is where you're searching. The way you are searching for is you are looking for the name Tom Hanks in all the persons in the graph. You are looking for Tom Hanks. The relationship, the direction in which you are looking is directed. So all uh, uh, Tom Hanks, let's say directed something. You are looking for what he has directed. And then you are searching for movie, which is again a uh, entity type, right? So person is an entity type, movie is an entity type. You are searching for that movie and then your query returns the movie. So this particular query is going to return the movie, which was directed by Tom Hanks. Okay. Does that make sense? Everyone? Yes or no? Just quickly on the chat. This query is going to query the graph database and give you the movie, which Tom Hanks has directed. Again, you can also match a variable Tom. Tom is the variable here. He's of the type person. His name is Tom Hanks. He has directed a movie. For, for him to direct a movie, I want to know what is the name of Tom? What is the born year? What is the title of the movie? And when was the movie released? Right? So this REL re uh, represents relationship. Okay? So Tom Hanks as the person is related to a particular movie because he has directed that movie. And these are the ways I want to get his value, the data set, right? I've added a link in the slide. You can go and check out this sample project. Okay, let's look at a more complicated uh, query. What sushi restaurants are in New York that my friends like? Okay, what sushi restaurants are in New York that my friends like? Okay, so I'm going to match person. The name of the person is Philip. So my name is Philip. Philip is a friend of, I'm going to find all the friends. This friend likes restaurants. These restaurants are located in New York. Location is New York. And this restaurant also serves cuisine, which is sushi. Right? So you can see the amount of connections that you can form in a graph. Okay? And you can see the example here. Philip is a friend of two people. These two people like different restaurants. And these two restaurants serve the cuisine sushi. And these two restaurants are also located in New York. So then I will be suggested this particular restaurant. Okay. Because there can be multiple restaurants serving sushi that my friends like. I can limit my occurrences to five, which you see here. Order by return as these are all SQL query relations, right? So it becomes very important to understand this query and the extent to which graph data can be used to answer questions, right? Person named Philip is a friend of a variable friend. 
for all the friends they like restaurants the restaurants are located in new york new york and the restaurant also serves cuisine sushi right i can access and answer this question like this and these are simple queries i mean yes you will have to focus some amount of syntax you'll have to do some practice but the possibility and the potential of using graph data in the future by learning this cipher query language is amazing i mean it's really really a uh, very progressive field in today's day and age right talking all the good things we should also be thinking about the disadvantages of a graph database and uh, yes it's not that there are no disadvantages but considering that a graph uh, is so useful there are some tiny disadvantages as well let's look at this it is difficult to scale a graph database because it can only exist in a one tier architecture okay suppose you have a 1 terabyte data frame okay 1 terabyte csv file you can split and save the csv file in multiple machines okay uh, 128 gb in one machine another 128 gb in another machine so on and so forth right but if you have 1 terabyte of graph data you cannot split it because splitting it will close the connections will cut off the connections that you cannot rejoin right so the entire graph has to be stored in one place and for that one tier architecture the the space required and the system performance required will be huge so you will need one machine but that one machine has to be very powerful okay graph databases have no uniform query language so cipher is valid for neo 4g if you try to find other graph databases they can have another query language of their own so it's not like you learn one query language and you're good to go there is no uniform query language it is changeable across platforms okay the user base is small so the problems that you face or the errors that you find you will not be able to find solutions easily because the community is small but that's also a side advantage because it is growing so rapidly that you can be the you can be the person who has you know used the platform a lot has worked a lot with graph data and you you can use your experience your knowledge to get better job opportunities to uh, to solve more critical problems more complex problems and make your name in the world as a you know someone who is an expert in graph databases right uh, in a graph it's also very difficult to encrypt data because graphs store nodes relationships as edges right so the relationships are stored with their names the entities are stored with their names there are properties of every node that are split so in that way encryption of data is not that easy in a graph and because encryption is not easy the security point of view might also be compromised right so that is why the graph database has these kind of disadvantages but other than that a graph database can be used very very uh nicely in a corporate setting where there's a lot of data a lot of interesting applications are possible and the potential of using graphs to solve user problems with uh, data based decision making is immense is huge i would just uh, uh want to motivate everyone to go through a graph database try and understand how it works do a small project do some experiment but uh, make sure you are acquainted with the skill set uh, uh this skill set because this is going to be the skill set of the future the next 5 to 10 years a lot of investments across companies and organizations will be happening for graph databases because they have certain advantages that relational databases can never handle okay so that was it for today's webinar uh, i want to thank all of you and uh, i am going to be taking questions now so if anyone has any questions you can turn on your microphone or put the questions in the chat and i will make sure i answer them
uh yeah uh, so uh, rajendra ji there's a lot of use cases if you want to go and find some use cases on neo 4j you can definitely go online okay i'd suggest uh going online and finding a resource right if you go to neo 4j right you will see that they have a lot of use cases okay neo 4j has free free data management okay start free for data scientists you can click you can actually get examples also you can go through uh, a lot of use cases also and you can learn cipher also you can also learn how to integrate it with python go dot net java all of them right uh, let me see uh, if you get a uh, i mean not for today's webinar but we can definitely have a neo 4j use case uh, sometime okay uh, in this you can see when connected data matters the most fraud detection analysis this is one use case network and database infrastructure monitoring for it operations this is another recommendation engine and product recommendation system that is another right you can see master data management social media and social media graphs just click on one use case right once you click on a use case you can actually watch the webinar that they have conducted you can also go through the case study you can go through code examples business outcomes challenges and everything okay so you will find it online but if you want a use case directly from us from inside aiml let us know we'll try to plan another webinar where we'll go through a practical example of the same for it operations this is Uh, yeah, online. Okay, I'd suggest uh, going online and finding a resource. Right. If you go to Neo Four J, okay, I think that was it. There are no further questions that I see on the YouTube live chat. Uh, that's great. Thanks, everyone. I will. See you next time. Have a good day. Happy weekend. Thank you.